A new WWE signing has been confirmed. Then we're going to talk a little bit about a Logan Paul controversy in the WWE. And yes, we are going to talk about a WWE tag team who has invaded the local indie scene in the city where SummerSlam is being hosted. It's all coming up right here on The Ango Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to kick things off with DIY. Obviously, uh, you know, WWE allowing their talent to work indies. It's a very strange time period because WWE is a little bit more flexible about these things. Well, last night, uh, DIY made a surprise appearance at an indie show in Cleveland, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, excuse me. Um, and, and look, this is actually really awesome because they pulled up at AIW. And uh, look, this is where Gargano basically came up. And, uh, you know, he before signing to WWE, that's where he was, right? Uh, he pulled up, then he brought out Gargano. And honestly, just wrestling fans in general didn't expect this. I really want this to become a new trend in the WWE, right? Like, I understand WWE is the big leagues. I understand WWE is the big wig. But at the same time, too, if you're going to be bringing your massive events to these cities i think it's really dope to have your hometown heroes go to their respective indie shows that they really got their career started in and for johnny gargano and champa to be there i'm sure that was a great surprise for fans but now i think it actually incentivizes indie shows for example you know wwe is working with gcw and they're working with tna and they're doing all these different things but if wwe has you know for example they announced the show in vancouver for survivor series like, I don't know which wrestler is from Vancouver, but for the sake of the conversation, you know, if there's a talent that's from Vancouver and, and they worked a specific indie show, you know, go out there. Let them go out there. I think it's good PR. And then also, I think it does look good for WWE to show that they are in some ways willing to help indie wrestling. And I just think it's like a really cool thing that WWE is starting to do stuff like this. You know, it's like. I understand AEW has always had that flexibility, but WWE hasn't. And one of the big things that I've always been an advocate for is change in the industry. Like this doesn't hurt WWE in any aspect, right? If a talent is from Vancouver and they have a pay-per-view in Vancouver, let them pull up at an event. If WWE's got a show in Detroit and you got Motor City Machine Guns signed to your company, let them pull up at an indie show next time you have a pay-per-view in Detroit. My point that I'm making is I think it's just good for overall business. It doesn't impact the WWE. And honestly, it does help indie wrestling because now it kind of sets the expectation. You literally have no idea who could show up at these indie shows. Um, and, and obviously for WWE to be a big part of that change, it's very unique. Uh, guys, I want to talk a little bit about Logan Paul. Um, look, I'm not really familiar with the Olympics. I don't watch the Olympics. I, I don't have any interest in the Olympics. Uh, but Logan Paul became very, very outspoken uh, based on some stuff that was being talked about online. People are calling for it being misinformation and whatnot. Logan Paul was very outspoken about it. And then essentially Ibu of WrestlePurist came out on Twitter and said that WWE PR hit Logan up and he crashed out and started kicking and screaming. Now, this really caught the attention of a lot of wrestling fans in the IWC. And it's a very interesting thing that's happened because... Most people probably don't respond to this. In the case of Logan Paul, he got a lot of blowback on social media for his remarks that he made. Uh, but this time, Logan Paul actually responds to Ibu of WrestlePurist, and he says that this is a flat-out lie. Now, there have been other sources who have chimed in and also conveyed what, you know, Ibu had said. So here's the thing, right? A lot of this comes down to social media. A lot of this comes down to talking about sensitive subjects a lot of this comes down to just overall social media professionalism and stuff like that now me personally i don't like to talk politics on social media i don't like to really talk about anything on social media other than wrestling and for the most part i think logan paul obviously being a podcaster and being an influencer he's going to chime in from time to time about different topics and it's really important that when you discuss topics on social media regardless of what the topic is it's really important that you're not misinforming people but also you are doing it with the right intentions. And as far as Logan Paul goes, I'm not really familiar with anything happening in the Olympics. It's not something I pay attention to, so I don't really understand the whole thing. Um, but at the same time, too, when it comes to Logan Paul and, and having these comments, I just personally think it's kind of dumb to be 
chiming in on something if you're not really knowledgeable about it you know now as far as logan paul kicking and screaming and being upset with wwe pr or whatever it may be i don't know obviously wwe has known about logan paul and maybe some of his controversies before they should obviously have known about maybe you know the way he's been outspoken on his podcast and whatnot and that's completely fine right like that's you know at the end of the day, they knew what they were getting themselves into. If for some reason they have an issue with Logan Paul, they're going to have to handle that internally. Um, but as far as Logan Paul denying it, you know, he came out and denied it. So what what part of the story is real? I don't know, right? Obviously, as far as that goes, you don't really know in this situation. Um, there's two sides to every story. I think this is one of those particular scenarios where Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't, but also at the same time too, years and years ago, there was a lot of stuff that, that was said about Mercedes Vernado and then, you know, that was all deemed untrue. So sometimes things be talked about and they're just not accurate and, you know, that's kind of the unfortunate aspect of it all. Um, I want to turn our attention to the merchandise. Ladies and gentlemen, use the code SUMMER24 for 15% off. You can do it right now on www.ango.live. At the time of this recording, it's quite early. So, uh, yes, let's just make that very clear. On the website, get merch, uh, new stuff, beautiful stuff. Get dripped in swag. I don't know. If you guys want to support, that's a great way to do it. Uh, guys, a new WWE signing has been confirmed. Mark Henry's son, Jacob Henry has confirmed his WWE signing uh, during the Remix Rumble event. Mark Henry had a chance to DJ. He was DJing for the crowd. And uh, what was really interesting is Jacob Henry, his son, actually came up, took the microphone, and he dropped the announcement. Uh, he says, I just want you to be the first to know that I'm going to be a superstar, and it's been put on paper. Um, a lot of talk about Mark Henry and what was going to happen after AEW. A lot of people have looked at his son as somebody with potential. He's young. He's an athlete. A lot of potential. A lot of upside. And this just goes to show you WWE's strength in recruiting young up-and-comers. Um, obviously, Mark Henry was part of AEW, so part of me does wonder why was his son not being brought into AEW. Maybe not even with a big contract or whatever, but maybe get him some look. Dark matches. Uh, obviously there's ring of honor and there's opportunities to, to develop people. And it just kind of goes to show you WWE is in the business of developing future stars. AEW is in the, the mindset of developing their TV show. Um, I think there is a lot of benefit to the long-term payoff of building up talent and developing talent and stuff like that. So it is intriguing to me to see that WWE has signed them. Now, keep in mind, Mark Henry has not returned to the company, but obviously I'm sure Mark Henry being, a former WWE star, obviously having ties to the company. I'm sure it helped out in this case. Um, it's going to be interesting. I love NXT. I love being able to watch people before they blossom and grow into something bigger and better. So we'll see how this all pans out. But ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think down below. That is it for the Ango Show.